This story starts with Banggood.com offering to send this product for free for the purpose of this review. So thank you for offering this opportunity and right now they have this on special. So if you're looking to get one, please check out the link I've placed in the description. It is available in their EU warehouse. So you will get it in a matter of days uh, via courier free of any additional tax. If however you would like to order it from their Chinese warehouse, uh, they do collect VAT at sale for EU-based customers. Inside the box we are greeted with the instrument and I must say I expected a compact unit but this blows my mind. It's actually smaller when you get to see it in real life and it feels kind of strange because it does have all of the visual cues of a professional instrument with the exception of size. It's something new but I expect to see more of these uh, miniaturized instruments in the next couple of years. You also uh, get a power adapter inside the box and one that apparently has all of the safety certifications and it comes with these exchangeable socket adapters. You get the USB power lead which is just a, an adapter from USB to barrel jack and you also get two coaxial cables. That's pretty much all you'll need to get started with this instrument. The sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com, is a professional PCB manufacturer which right now is running its fourth edition PCB design contest. They offer numerous consistent cash prizes as well as products and coupon codes, so I encourage you to check out the contest page linked below. It's very easy to sign up and there are many prizes that you could win. I have the UTG962E 60 MHz model, but right from the start you shouldn't set your expectations too high just because you see the 60 MHz bandwidth mentioned here. Uh, because take a look at the sample rate, it's uh, just 200 meg samples per second, so at the maximum output of 60 MHz you're only getting roughly 3 samples per second, which isn't enough to describe a clear simple waveform, not to mention some more complicated waveforms. I mean it might do okay with a sine wave just because it can specify the top and bottom points and with a slower rise time it will automatically turn it into a sine wave but that's pretty much all you're going to get at the max output of 60 MHz and in fact if you look at the specs they make it very clear that it can only do a sine wave at 60 MHz. So they're kind of pushing the max spec of this unit for marketing purposes by specifying it at 60 MHz when in fact it can only do that for a sine wave. And it's pretty obvious that you need to cut some corners to be able to offer such an instrument in the $150 range with shipping included. But as long as you are aware of these limitations, it's still a very good offer. Actually, it's the best offer on the market just because there isn't anything like this available with similar specs in a similar price range and with the same build quality. Looking at the other specs, they claim uh, harmonic distortion is pretty good in the lower range up to 30 megahertz but it gets worse at higher than 30. Phase noise is once again good and I don't really have the equipment to measure and verify that here in my lab but I would suspect uh, these exact specs don't really mean much for the average user of this class of instrument. The unit can output 10 volts peak to peak in 50 ohm and up to 20 volts peak to peak in high Z mode and it also has some DC offset capability. The main takeaway from this spec sheet is that this has some pretty decent specs that will cover most hobby needs. Actually this protection film was pretty bad and it left some residue behind so I'm gonna have to clean this with some kind of adhesive remover. The display on this unit is a 4.3 inch TFT LCD with a resolution of 480 by 272 pixels. The brightness on this, I would say it's average, uh, certainly readable in the bright lights I have here, but not the best we've seen. And it does have this uh, glossy cover which is not ideal on test instruments. I would very much prefer the uh, matte finish. You control the instrument through this uh, keypad and rotary encoder arrangement, which is pretty typical for test instruments, only that it has these smaller keys and they're a little bit crammed together. It's not an issue for my hands to push these uh, uh, buttons, but I would imagine that if you have thicker uh, hands, it's going to be difficult not to press 
two keys at once. So in that case, I'm sure you would prefer a full-sized unit. The power button, the USB interface and DC jack power input are on the left of the instrument. As you can see, it takes a 5 volts, 2 amps input, so it shouldn't be too difficult to convert this to battery power. You could even power it from a power bank. On the right, we have the uh, two output channels as well as the um, external modulation input. But it's important to know that you will only be able to provide this external modulation to an FSK type modulation. And it's also important to know the fact that the two channels are both ground referenced, which means you won't be able to generate two signals and insert them into different portions uh, of a circuit that live at different potentials because you will be effectively shorting those two through the uh, ground connection of the signal generator. Now since this is such a compact unit you will not be able to push these buttons without holding the unit but the actual uh, feel on the buttons is uh, quite okay. They are rubbery and they do have some positive feedback. Boot time is quite okay, uh, I'm guessing it's 4 to 5 seconds. Uh, when you start channel 1 is always highlighted on boot and both outputs are off. If you want to turn on channel 1 you have to press the uh, channel 1 button again and the key will light to signal uh, channel 1 is uh, on. Press it again and you turn off the output. Pressing channel 2 will highlight channel 2 and pressing it again will turn on channel 2. All this is pretty intuitive and in general the GUI is pretty intuitive. Uh, things react pretty much the way you would expect them to do. My unit is running software version 1.09, hardware version 1.01, FPG version 1.07 and it would be interesting to see what yours is running if you uh, already have one of these. Please let me know in the comments maybe with the month you purchase it and the firmware versions that you are uh, running on your unit. There is also software that you can install to control the instrument over USB. I'm not really into that but you can use it to generate some arbitrary waveforms and upload them to the instrument for replay. The downside is that they will not be persistent which means as soon as you remove power they will get lost from the instrument memory. By now I think most of you would also like to take a look at the uh, internals of this unit, check out the uh, build quality, check out what hardware they're using and I expect to see an FPGA in here, some amplifiers, some DACs and a processor to handle the interface task. Uh, all we have to do is remove these four screws and we should be granted access to the inside of this unit. The internal construction is pretty nice. Uh, there is a two board uh, construction. This is the LCD and keypad uh, board. So the numbers are rough, rubbed off this, uh, this chip, but this is likely a processor uh, driving the LCD while at the same time uh, doing some housekeeping, reading the uh, keypad, turning on or off the various LED. And it just connects via this uh, ribbon cable to the analog board which sits on the back of this instrument and is uh, shielded. That's uh, very nice and it's uh, for sure contributing to the good specs of the unit. After removing the shield we can get a closer look at the analog board. By the way I will add some high resolution photos uh, from this teardown to a blog post which will be linked in the description below the video. This is where all of the magic happens and a few words on build quality first. The PCB quality is good. The soldering job is superb on these and judging by the uh, flux residue on the back they've done some selective fluxing and automated soldering which is not a cheap process so they haven't cut corners on the build quality of this instrument. They seem to be using uh, good quality parts. Uh, they have Omron relays in here, TI branded op-amps, uh, analog devices, DACs. So it's everything you could wish for in here, especially considering the uh, cost of this instrument. Underneath this heatsink we seem to have an FPGA and I'm gonna try to remove that later, but I expect the numbers to be rubbed off the same way as with the other uh, important chips in here. For, for example, they also uh, rubbed off the numbers of the uh, 
processor used on the display and keyboard unit but they did a sloppy job on this because you can pretty much see that this is an ARM microcontroller from Giga devices and uh, it wouldn't be too difficult to identify this so not really sure what they even uh, bother with uh, rubbing these numbers off. Maybe it slows down the competition, but by how much? By a few days at best? These two chips right here are the uh, two output DACs and members of the EV blog forum seem to think these might be the AD9744 because they match the uh, pinout of that chip and uh, the specs as well. And we have two uh, identical analog sections in here and what's interesting is that they even have these uh, vertical shields in here. I suspect that's to minimize the crosstalk between the two channels and to block any noise coming from the power supply section which is up here. Judging by the labels on this section we can see we have plus and minus 13 volt power supply which I'm sure is used in the analog section to allow for uh, those swings of uh, plus or minus 10 volts peak to peak. And uh, we have components on the back as well and the date of this uh, PCB is uh, uh, December 2020 so it's a fairly uh, recently built board. We also have what looks like a uh, JTAG connector right here next to our uh, FPGA. I'm not sure if it's really worth it to try to do any hacking or debugging on this class of instrument but the port is here if anyone wants to have a go. Overall I'm positively impressed with the uh, build quality and this confirms once again uh, the instrument is worth every penny. And I'm surprised to see that they haven't rubbed off the uh, numbers of the FP FPGA. It's a Xilinx Spartan 6 uh, XC6SLX9. Uh, that is the part number on this FPGA. Now I'll walk you through some of the waveforms that are available on the instrument. There are quite a lot of different waveform examples, 24 of them to be more precise on the arbitrary waveform uh, menu, but you can't exactly control their parameters. So it's good for experimental purposes, but probably not ideal for uh, some real world usage of those types of waveforms, because in various test and measurement setups, you would probably need to adjust the various parameters of those waveforms. It's certainly nice to have uh, all of these uh, waveforms in here, especially for hobby or educational purposes. But for a real engineer doing measurements, he would probably appreciate some more flexibility on these wave waveforms. But then again, some measurement lab is not going to go for one of these instruments. The slew rate is fixed for all of the different generated signals and it's not a very fast rise time. Hence, when you try to generate a square waveform, uh, when you start going above 9, 10 megahertz, it starts turning into a sine wave and no, this is not due to the bandwidth of my scope. That's how the waveform actually looks like due to the uh, rather slow rise time. And there's also a little bit of jitter uh, noticeable in here. As far as the Windows app, I haven't played with that just because I'm not too much interested in the arbitrary waveform generation capability and defining my own waveforms. I rarely ever needed that, but should you need to use that, you should expect the app feeling outdated and pretty clunky. However, there is good news because I have seen a project on GitHub which promises similar functionality uh, through Python, so you should be able to control this instrument via a Python script which should enable you to create various automations and test measurement setups. As you probably noticed, I haven't done much spec verification on this unit because I feel like this is not something the average hobbyist buying this would be interested too much. I'm sure the unit is capable of meeting basic spec and I don't feel like testing it to the limit just to prove it's out by a couple of percent on some measurement is going to prove anything. It just doesn't target the users that need advanced capability and high precision. And I think this uh, concludes my review of the unit. This is a two-channel uh, arbitrary waveform generator that's built really well with high quality parts. It has good functionality and decent specs that more than cover hobby and educational needs. And for the cost of the unit, I don't think there's anything else on the market to beat it. That's why I'm recommending this unit. If you are in the market for a cheap signal generator, this is probably your best choice that you can make at this time. Same as always, there will be a link for this in the description below the video. So check out that link. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month to keep these videos coming. But if you don't feel like doing that, just smash that like button because it helps a lot in the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.